Hi everyone, this is Jared, one of the academic coaches here at Southern New Hampshire University. And today we are talking about explaining your answer to a math problem. Writing in mathematics can be challenging, but actually we see this all the time in our textbooks. Whenever a new topic is introduced, the authors provide explanations to clarify the examples. And this is really the method you'll use for this kind of a problem as well, where you'll write your explanation in your own words and in your own style. The first thing you'll wanna do is to set expectations for the explanation. A great way to start is to look at the writing in the course, look at the writing in the textbook, but probably the best resource you'll have here is your instructor. So conferring with your instructor early in the term, getting a sense of what they want out of the assignment is gonna be very helpful to manage those expectations. But ask yourself questions like, how long should this be? What level of detail should I include? Is there any special notation or special program I'd need in order to present this information? Another important idea is to learn or to know your technology. Each course is gonna use different programs, different textbooks, different uh, equation editors, and you really wanna practice these before you actually have to use them in an assignment. This practice could also include looking at documentation or, or tutorials, but uh, the goal really should be that anything you, that you want to write down on a piece of paper, you could transfer or translate into the programs you're using. Finally, uh, another important idea here is gonna be to use the key terms in your course throughout the writing that you have. And this can be helpful, especially if, it's, if you're having trouble getting started, because a lot of times the key terms are gonna be equations or definitions, which you can write or present and use as the foundation for your ideas about those particular definitions. Typically when writing an explanation in mathematics, your statements are gonna fall into three categories. So there are three elements that you'll need. Uh, the first is definitions or axioms. Uh, another is operations or the actual steps you use to solve the problem. And finally, the conclusions where you'll present your, actual, your answer. Let's take a look at a practical example and see how these work together to help us craft a, a strong explanation. So we have a question here that asks us to find the domain of the rational function f of s, f of x and explain the answer. So it looks like we have two key terms that we wanna define before we get started with our operations. So I went ahead and Tried that here. So this was my writing before actually looking at any you know, reference material and really just trying to put the ideas in my own words. Now I can take those and compare them with my textbook and see the accuracy of those statements. I'll start with the first one. The domain of a function is any value that gives a valid output. So if I search for the term domain in my textbook here, I notice that I'm pretty much on the right track. Although one slight difference here is that this offers a couple of key terms that I don't have in my definition, input and independent variable. So let's add those to give my first statement a little bit of a, a stronger tone. Now we can do the same thing for our second definition. A rational function is any function that can be expressed as a fraction. And I'll search for the term. You can also use your glossary or 
uh, your, your index if uh, the search function doesn't, doesn't get, bring up exactly what you need. In this case, we do find a good uh, definition here, but we notice that it's written with some different terminology where they, they define it as a quotient of two polynomial functions. So here I would have the option of using that term in my explanation uh, or keeping it the way that it is since it expresses the same general idea. So I think I'll keep it as is. Now, in order to solve this problem, we're going to need to set our denominator equal to zero and solve for x. So we want to state that clearly here in the, in the third statement. And now we can move on to the operations, which will require me to use the uh, equation editor in my, in my technology here. So if I write solving the equation, gives the domain restriction of negative seven. In this case, that's really the only uh, operation that we need. Now for our conclusion, we'll just have to present that in the notation that would be required by, uh, by the course itself. And again, we'll use our uh, equation editor to present that in a clear, clear way. So here we'll say the domain, or maybe therefore, The domain is Perfect. So now we have a complete explanation that follows the expectations set by the, the textbook that we saw. We also used our technology to make sure that our audience can read our ideas very clearly. And finally, we used key terms throughout and explained any complicated or technical definitions. Thank you for watching Academic Support's Guide on Explaining Your Answers for Mathematics please read this video's description for further resources.